Hello, and thank you for joining me. My name is Alan Terletto. I'm the field CTO at Redis. Today, I'll be talking about the critical topic of accelerating application modernization and cloud migrations, and how Redis can improve your time to market with these strategic initiatives and lower the overall feasibility cost of those transformations. We'll do this within the context of its impact on people, process, and culture. But that's not all. For you techies in the audience, we're not just going to talk about it, we'll show it to you. For that, I'm joined by my distinguished colleague, Brad Barnes. Brad will demonstrate how Redis Enterprise can be used to seamlessly integrate with your existing legacy on-premise database and migrate that data in real time to a cloud-managed service and keep that data pipeline in sync so both are operating active actively for geo-distributed scale and business continuity, sometimes called hot DR. Before we do all that, let's start with the foundation. Although Redis is extremely popular, it's likely there are some in the audience that may not have heard of it. So let's briefly intro it for context. Redis is an open source in memory NoSQL database, which natively supports a variety of data structures and data models that are each natively designed for peak real-time performance and high throughput use cases across transactional, operational, and analytical workloads. Redis was originally popularized for being the fastest data store in the market with its sub-millisecond performance, ease of use, and more recently as a multi-model database, a perfect fit for modern day applications and microservices. In this session, I'll share how Redis is used by the largest global institutions to accelerate application modernization and cloud migrations. Let's, let's dive in. Rapidly evolving customer expectations by younger generations and the accelerating speed of digital innovation pose extraordinary challenges for today's enterprises. For example, according to industry analysts, 80% of today's banking customer interaction involve at least one digital channel. Of course, enterprises were aware of this accelerating trend and for more than a decade began to slowly shift their operating models towards digital processes, technology, and culture. Digital transformation, as is commonly used for this movement, promised increased business agility through application modernization, leaner processes, and agile methodologies. While enterprises invested towards this initiative, and there are plenty of success stories, things didn't always go as planned. It turned out that transforming existing operations were expensive, they were complex and often political. So many enterprises delegated digital investment spend towards greenfield projects and flashy new mobile applications instead of replatforming their legacy technology stack. These workarounds were quite common until the growing movement for cloud migrations exposed their brittle architectures. Cloud migrations also promised increased business agility, but this time through on-demand scalability of infrastructure, platforms, and managed services. They renewed the call for application modernization, since the lift and shift model rarely worked where it mattered the most, the data tier. For the largest enterprises, the data tier is primarily reliant on one of a handful of on-prem relational databases, typically DB2 on the mainframe or Oracle. Though legacy databases are expensive to support and least capable of meeting today's real-time digital performance requirements, they are protected in a sense because they are also the most challenging to replatform due to decades of built-in complexity reliant on in-house expertise, as mentioned people and process, not just technology. In fact, 57% of retail banks consider legacy systems the biggest obstacle for digital progress. To overcome these on-premise anchors, enterprises began to widely adopt a modern architectural style based on lightweight and loosely coupled business-oriented microservices. This was a great solution for risk-averse enterprises since they could break off individual business workloads from the monolith, typically the mainframe, in a phased and less risky migration. Throughout my meetings with business and technology executives, prior investments into these application modernization and cloud migrations were repeatedly referenced as a key differentiator for perseverance through this pandemic. Their systemic impact on technology, process, and culture provided leaders with the requisite business agility to pivot their operating models in time to make a difference. It was through digital readiness and cloud-native technology that these enterprises were able to reinvent their customer journeys composed primarily of digital channels. Now, I already mentioned that most large enterprises primarily rely on a handful of on-prem relational databases even though there is wide consensus these legacy technologies hampered their digital transformation success. 
This is an interesting paradox that's worth exploring. So let's briefly touch on this a bit further, or double click as they say now. If you look at the evolutionary database lineage depicted on the diagram, relational databases and mainframes originated during a period of time, let's say around 50, 60 years ago, which not only predated the cloud, but when storage, particularly RAM, was very expensive. With storage cost as the primary constraint of the time, relational databases were designed primarily with disk-based storage as a first principle, not performance nor data access. The consequence of this design was what is known as an impedance mismatch between the way we store data within relational databases as columns and rows and the way we access and visualize it as objects or documents or JSON or time series, etc. So not only was performance limited, by the physical constraints of a spinning disk, which hasn't really improved over the years, but the extra transformation, serialization, and complexity to overcome this impedance mismatch limits the latency and throughput performance, which digital applications desperately need and consumers expect. We call this latency the new outage because unlike the past, today's digital consumer is not gonna sit around and watch a spinning hourglass. They'll just move on to the next thing. But it's not just the consumer experience that requires real-time performance. With today's unprecedented demands for large-scale simultaneous access to data in real time, it's no wonder we are regularly seeing outages during volatile market peaks on even middle and back office applications. So what are enterprises to do? Well, this is where NoSQL databases into the picture. NoSQL databases were built using a 180 degree different mental model than relational databases. While relational databases optimize for storage first, NoSQL databases optimize for data access first, which avoids that impedance mismatch we mentioned. This was possible since they first originated in the 2000s, with storage becoming much more cost-effective, including RAM, allowing for the viability of distributed data platforms, including in-memory data platforms like Redis, which was the precursor for database-managed services on the cloud. So let's now take that historical context and talk about why it matters. Companies constrained by legacy database architectures risk falling behind in the race to deliver real-time digital services. Hence, innovative industry leaders are rethinking their approach by adopting cloud-native NoSQL databases, which in the case of Redis can provide real-time performance, multi-model capabilities, and mission-critical business continuity needed to meet emerging real-time business demands. A prime example is Capital One Bank. Just a few months back at our 2021 Redis conference, <clears throat> the head of enterprise payment architecture, Mike Lee, gave both a, a keynote and technical session about building Capital One's next generation payment processing architecture. He talked about mobile banking, millennial preferences to move money digitally, and 57% of disruptions coming out of fintechs as drivers for what he said was, quote, blurring of the lines between business, uh, between banks and technology that really started to open new doors to meet those market challenges. As an industry leader with regards to their 100% cloud-based footprint, Capital One looked to solve these problems from a capability view, instead of starting from the constraints of their existing technology stack. So taking a first principles approach, they concluded that streaming millions of events Geo-distributed business continuity, high availability, item potency, and performance were all key capabilities required for their next generation payment processing system. They relied on Redis Enterprise's real-time cloud-native multi-model database to not only power their event-driven microservice architecture, but also for business continuity and to overcome internal GRC policies, which forced them to rebuild their infrastructure from scratch every 60 days without incurring downtime. Now, I mentioned during the onset of this presentation that application modernization was about people, it was about process, and of course, technology. So let's go through each dimension using Redis Enterprise as our example of how a real-time cloud-native data platform can overcome the challenges we covered earlier. As mentioned in the intro, Redis is an open source and memory NoSQL database. After many years and hundreds of thousands of deployments, as a native cloud service, we decided to package our battle-tested knowledge of how to best manage Redis in a cloud-native environment into software called Redis Enterprise that can be deployed by our customers on-prem, as a cloud-managed service, or even first-class SaaS software. More on that in a bit. Redis Enterprise provides enterprise-grade administrative capabilities, such as linear scalability, high availability, durability, backup and restore utility, security, and even more uniquely, capabilities such as multi-tenancy, active-active geo-replication for business continuity, and tiered data storage to reduce total cost of ownership. Speaking of unique, as mentioned, 
we've extended the foundation of the open source project. So Redis can become a multi-model database. As you can see on the top right, Redis Enterprise supports the native storage and query capabilities of multiple models, such as JSON, search, time series, graph, AI and ML models, and more. Putting it simply, if you plan to use JSON, then store JSON. If you need a time series, then use Redis time series. No more impedance mismatch, just optimal real-time performance and faster time to market. As mentioned, Redis Enterprise is cloud native and with managed services quickly gaining as a de facto cloud deployment model, we were perfectly positioned to partner with the major cloud providers of the day to improve developer productivity, ensure secure deployments, resiliency, compliance, and integratability. So you can meter and use your cloud commit just like native services. Redis Enterprise is deployed on Microsoft Azure as a first party natively, native fully managed service as part of Azure Cash for Redis Enterprise tiers. This offering combines Azure's global presence, flexibility, security, and deep investments into compliance with Redis Enterprise's unmatched 5.9's availability, real-time performance, and multi-model capability. On Google GCP Cloud, Redis Enterprise can also be deployed as a first-class managed service with many of the same advantages to our customers on Azure Cash. However, with the added benefit of integration with Anthos and GKE. Redis Enterprise is also available as a managed service on AWS, where customers can benefit from using their AWS commit towards the best in class Redis deployment. Of course, all of this is backed by a decade of success as a database as a service. We'll pick this topic back up when we cover how a cloud native data platform like Redis Enterprise can accelerate cloud migrations and hybrid deployments. Now, organizations that succeed in application modernization, they view people and culture just as important as technology. I would argue even more so. You can acquire any technology, but your ability to adapt to a digital future depends on, the, on developing the next generation of skills, closing the existing talent gap, and future-proofing your team's potential. Technology is always about doing more with less, yet the combination is effective only if you pair technology with the right human skills. The creative aspect of innovation is entirely dependent on people after all. The main implication is that when leaders think about investing in technology, they should first think about investing in their people who make that technology useful. This is why empowerment and enablement are some of the most important factors for success in application modernization. Redis can make things a lot easier, even at the 10,000 person enterprise scale. Redis's large and vibrant community has voted it most loved five years in a row in Stack Overflow. It's launched 7 million times per day on Docker Hub, and it's the most used database on AWS. So what does that mean for application modernization? Well, there is a statistical likelihood that there is an entire segment of your application development team that is already trained on Redis. And with its ease of use and design around well-known data structures, new developers can be enabled and productive within a day, since at this point, every question has already been asked and answered on Stack Overflow further improving time to market and business agility. When you arm your people with technologies they actually want to use, productivity goes up bottom line. Now we covered people and technology, which leaves us with process. Now while process is a broader topic than just DevOps, one of the ways that a cloud native platform can accelerate application modernization is to simplify very complex operational concerns, especially at digital scale or on the cloud. And certainly, if you are modernizing to a microservice architecture. By providing built-in capability to natively handle complex DevOps, enterprises can standardize and scale deployments across any type of infrastructure, whether it's on-prem or the cloud. One of the defining capabilities for many of our customers is the ability to deploy geo-distributed active actively. With Redis Enterprise, not only can you do that with a few clicks of a button, but they have the unique advantage of not having to implement their own conflict resolution logic. Think of it as an implementation based on mathematical modeling to optimize the way you handle conflict resolution specific to the inherent properties of each individual data structure down to their unique operations within Redis. Although on its face, this concern might seem like a low level implementation detail. However, it can be a showstopper to deployments and hamper time to market if your development team is required to implement this very complex capability on their own. On the right, you see a shared responsibility matrix. I won't spend too much time here since we already covered managed services. However, GRC is a constant concern within highly regulated industries. and is a common barrier to application modernization, 
particularly as it pertains to cloud deployments. Leveraging a cloud managed service can expedite your ability to overcome this barrier by empowering enterprises to certify many of the shared responsibilities by that cloud provider just once at the front end of cloud adoption. Since the specialized services built on top of its foundations will derive the GRC assurances. In other words, their multi-million dollar investments strengthen the entire ecosystem, including partner driven managed services such as Redis Enterprise. And finally, infrastructure automation, another common form of quicksand for application modernization can be simplified using cloud native platforms. For example, Redis Enterprise's native Kubernetes integration can run on vanilla Kubernetes, OpenShift, VMware Enterprise, PKS, GKE, AKS, and more. This can be scaled out on an enterprise level and provide operators with uniform assurances and SLAs across all of their services. Now, since this topic can be a session onto itself, and I know we want to get to the demo, I'll leave you with the high level that our Kubernetes operator it manages the cluster nodes, while our database controller manages Redis database instances that deploy multi-tenant across clusters via custom resources. Everything you need to facilitate CI-CD processes like GitOps for code-driven infrastructure as code. Now we briefly touched on microservices a few times, but didn't really delve into why this architecture is becoming a very popular way to enable digital transformation initiatives, bootstrap cloud deployments, and minimize the cost of complexity of application modernization. Microservices enable incremental migration of subdomains from monolithic technology stacks. The movement towards this architecture promised increased business agility by allowing microservices to operate on their own release cycles, embrace end-to-end -end product ownership, and adopt a DevOps culture. By embracing this architecture and its associated organizational culture, enterprises can reduce time to market for new service development from months to days. Microservices also accelerate data tier cloud, cloud migrations, since they primarily rely on cloud native NoSQL databases, according to a 2021 IDC info brief survey. This ties back to our earlier discussion on why distributed NoSQLs are slowly replacing on-prem relational databases that were not built for the cloud, nor isolated release cycles. Now, if you're not familiar with microservices, you might think that this is pretty complex. Well, what if I told you that Redis can simplify this as well? Let's quickly break it down. We mentioned earlier that Redis Enterprise is a multi-model database, which means each model can support an optimum way to store and access data, dependent on the unique needs of each microservice. From a microservices perspective, these Redis models could all be deployed multi-tenant, yet remain isolated using Redis Enterprise. Redis can also seamlessly consume and publish telemetry data using its streaming and time series data models. In a microservice architecture, observability is critical to scale since you can have hundreds or potentially thousands of isolated deployments supporting your business. Redis's streaming technology can be used as a third-party message broker and event source storage. This can enable reporting, analytics, auditing, or even forensic analysis on the back end. Finally, Redis can even provide the plumbing between isolated data services, so everything seamlessly works as a unified workflow. All of this is possible with a single cloud-native platform, Redis Enterprise which significantly reduces the complexity and overhead of managing a portfolio of vendor technologies, which as mentioned earlier, comes with barriers to empowerment and enablement of your people, critical to application modernization and cloud deployments. Now, if you're interested to learn more about using Redis as part of a microservice architecture, check out our blog on the new stack, as well as the many resources we provide on this topic available on redis.com. In addition, we recently partnered with the IDC to survey large and medium-sized enterprises regarding their adoption of microservices and more broadly, application modernization. If you're interested to see what your peers are saying, definitely check this out as well. For example, you might be surprised to learn that 82% of enterprises are already adopting microservices with more than 40% claiming that their downtime would cause business disruptions. So already mission critical. It also reinforces the growing adoption of NoSQL databases. So again, plenty of great insight on the topic of application modernization and microservices. Finally, let's talk about hybrid cloud deployments. There's a lot to unpackage here. So let's simplify this down to three problem statements and solutions. First, how do you seamlessly and reliably get data out of your legacy operational database, which is likely anchored on-prem? For this, Redis Enterprise supports a change data capture technology called Redis Connect. Second, now that we know how to access that data, 
How do we get it from on-prem to the cloud? Simple. We'll use Redis Connect to replicate change data events to an on-prem active-active Redis Enterprise database, which will instantly propagate those events to its mirrored replica in the cloud. Third, can that Redis Enterprise replica be deployed as a cloud-managed service? Answer is yes. Redis Enterprise is unique in its ability to bilaterally replicate change data events between active-active clusters, which can be deployed on-prem, as a managed service, or even multi-cloud. This is a game changer to overcoming many of the barriers to cloud migrations and hybrid deployments. Now let's apply this within the context of application modernization using a common scenario. Let's say we have an on-prem legacy database powering a monolithic application that's intended to be replatformed to a microservice cloud architecture. This likely won't happen overnight. In fact, it might take a few years. So how do you slowly replatform to microservices powered by cloud managed databases without risking your existing operation? which will continue to be dependent on the legacy on-prem database. Well, with Redis Enterprise, it's actually quite simple. You can begin by seamlessly integrating Redis Connect to a specific workload within the legacy database and continuously replicate its data, including any changes, to an active-active Redis deployment with replicas both on-prem and the cloud. So now your data is everywhere. You can begin to consume it from the new cloud-based microservices and even fail back on-prem if anything goes wrong. That's it, easy, right? So what's next? Well, we do it for the next workload and the next one until finally the legacy database can be retired. Sounds too good to be true? That's fair. Let's see it in action. We're lucky enough to have Brad Barnes demonstrate the hybrid deployment I just described end to end for us. Brad, take it away. Thanks, Alan, let's get started. In this environment we have on our left-hand side, um, our legacy application uh, let's call it one of our critical applications that takes a long time uh, and a lot of effort to decommission. Um, this is running an aging middleware and app servers that need upgrades, um, that need expansion and things like that. And it's running a uh, relational database system uh, that we're going to connect with. Uh, it also has a number of running applications uh, accessing this late legacy system. Um, in an enterprise environment, that could be tens or even hundreds of applications that are interacting with uh, a system here. Um, outside of this, we have a Redis Connect implementation here in which we're following tables from this database. And we're moving that data into a local Redis instance, a uh, local Redis enterprise. And there is a local application here running in our data center uh, maybe it's a BI application. We're not going to focus too much on that. We also create a, create a relationship between uh, Redis instance and the cloud. And that's where our new application development is taking place. So there's a few microservices depicted here, um, including a new UI for one of our flagship applications. Uh, again, this is running in a cloud in a to totally different part of the country. Um, so let's walk through some of these components uh, in real time. Our on-prem environment looks like this. We have several components uh, running in uh, locally, uh, simulating a local data center. Um, we do have uh, my, uh, MS SQL server running in uh, Docker containers. We do also have um, a local Redis Enterprise instance also running in containers. Lastly, we have a Redis Connect instance, which is already set up and ready to listen on any transactions coming from our legacy uh, data system. Um, next to our cloud environment, we also have a Redis enterprise instance in the cloud in which we're replicating data from that local instance. Um, this, uh, for those of you who haven't seen it, this is a Redis enterprise user interface. A Redis enterprise cluster is built from a series of nodes and contains uh, some databases. This one, the bank front-end database, is the one that we'll be leveraging today. And we can see that it is a conflict-free replicated database, and it is in sync with its local, uh, local to me, uh, version. So this is a cloud-based Redis Enterprise uh, database that is replicating uh, to an on-prem uh, Redis instance. This database is also um, instantiated with the Redis search module in it, which gives you 
uh, in memory search and aggregation capability against the data that's in Redis. We will also show some of the Redis uh, data leveraging Redis Insights. And so we'll go through that shortly. And finally, um, we also have our uh, SQL Server instance and you can see transactions table here. Um, at the moment, uh, there is nothing in it, but we will start that workload very shortly. Couple things to note about the source database system, the legacy database system. Um, this is what the table, the transactions table looks like that we will be following. Uh, primary key, uh, amount of the transaction, description, you know, from and to account details, as well as a date and type. Uh, the other thing worth noting is that we, uh, we have enabled change data tracking uh, from this source system. So capability of the source system that we'll be relying on for Redis Connect to get these changes uh, from it. The next thing we're going to do is actually show um, how we're going to generate some workload here. Uh, so this is all set up, but basically uh, we're going to be creating and uh, deleting transactions uh, and, and generating workload against this database. Not necessarily, uh, you know, particular to a banking data model, but we want to generate changes and reflect those in the uh, remote Redis instance. So as we do this, we should be able to see that we are starting to get some incoming transactions. Indeed, we are. You can see that there's fake data in here. Um, we can also see just how many have uh, been created. Looks like there's 2,300 that exists as of now. So we'll let that continue in the background. Um, while that runs, we'll just get an update on the quantity here. While that runs, we'll have a look at um, Redis Insight. Redis Insight has connections to our local Redis instance and our remote or cloud-based Redis instance. Uh, we also have a configuration database that is storing uh, information that Redis Connect requires to process these changes. Uh, but let's have a look at our local database first. We can see now we're um, uh, approaching 10,000 keys, 11,000 keys. Um, not really uh, you know, too high performance, because I can only generate so much uh, based on my laptop. And we can see some of the nature of some of this data that's being uh, created. So transaction 3801, uh, just as we described and observed with the uh, SQL query a few moments ago. And there's quite a few here and they do uh, continue to grow. We look back at our overview, we're up to 20,000 keys now. These keys are actually the Redis hash data type, uh, which does look and feel a lot like a database record of a table. So we'll also switch over to the cloud-based database. Uh, this is Cloud Redis Search. Let's look at how that one is performing. Uh, this one also has a similar number of keys. These two uh, local Redis and remote Redis, they will converge and the data will be uh, the same across them as they are part of a conflict-free replicated database. Uh, the next thing we're going to look at is some of that performance with respect to the uh, remote Redis instance. And this will look quite a bit like uh, we saw in Redis Insight. Uh, but what is worth noting is um, this uh, system is showing that the data uh, databases, the Redis instances, uh, are fully synced. So what we're doing currently, back to the diagram, these applications here are generating changes uh, through the legacy system into the legacy uh, database uh, system of record. Those changes on uh, certain tables are being pushed through Redis Connect to Redis. We also have Redis Search enabled on this database, as well as the remote. And these two are in sync. The data will be the same across them, such that our new applications can access this data. 
So let's take a look at what is happening in the remote Redis, uh, Redis search database. We can execute some queries over there. So um, the first thing we're going to do is just establish, um, based on all the transactions in this database, uh, let's group them by a specific uh, transaction type and just count to see what they all look like. So this is actually a data aggregation we're performing on the data that's in memory. So you can see that certain transaction types, uh, Visa, we have some Nintendo Switch transactions in American Express, among others. But if we continue to execute this, this is a real-time index data set. So these numbers will continue to change. Uh, given that the source applications and source databases are changing, as is the Redis uh, remote Redis instance that's running in the cloud. Um, apart from the transaction types, we can also group by description. Again, this is faked data, uh, mocked up data. So uh, they are gonna look all quite a bit similar and you'll see quite an even distribution across those. And then just a quick view on database. Again, we're approaching 69,000 um, data records here, and we can have a look at what they might look like. Um, we should see some transactions rolling in here. My balance has changed over time. Now let's give you a taste of the real-time nature of this solution. So what we're going to do next is we're going to inject a unique uh, value a uh, unique transaction into the system record here, and then query it um, using Redis search on the cloud end. So let's have a look here. This is um, system record. Uh, this doesn't exist, the specific transaction ID. Uh, we are going to add it here. So we should be able to find the term Europe clouds um, in our search, uh, in our Redis search remote instance. Let's just add this to the database. We can see that it took effect. Now we can go to Redis search nearly instantaneously and query for Europe clouds. And we did indeed find that transaction, which was just committed um, you know, two and a half seconds ago. We also, uh, while we're doing this, we're generating on the order of hundreds or thousands of operations per second against uh, Redis instance. Um, and that's not uh, too big of a deal for Redis, but we are indexing them in real time. And we did see um, you know, the time and the propagation it took to inject a specific transaction uh, on over here, uh, simulated from one of these applications and uh, watch it be indexed and queryable in the data service here for the uh, new banking application. So this should allow a, um, you know, an institution to deliver a more rich uh, data and user experience um, that we've come to expect. And in the process, they didn't have to break away from any of the legacy systems. So they're still running, they're still operating. Um, over time, uh, certain services here will be uh, decommissioned and new services may be, um, you know, deployed in the cloud, again, to enable a better user experience. So that's it for the demo, uh, for this hybrid cloud demo. Uh, we hope that you enjoyed it. Thanks, Brad. That demo had a little bit of everything, and I hope gave the audience confidence that application modernization, specifically at the data tier, doesn't have to be painful. And all it took was a single cloud native data platform, Redis Enterprise. I hope you found this talk engaging. I know we kept it high level, <clears throat> but we covered a lot of ground on this critical topic. The momentum for application modernization is only going to accelerate as the pandemic gave us a preview of a digital first economy and shortened the expectations on when we're going to reach it. As we begin to turn the corner on COVID-19, it's clear that digital's impact on culture and business will only continue, which means organizations can no longer afford to deprioritize modernizing their data tier. In the digital first economy, data is the lifeblood of the organization which makes databases the heart of enterprise architectures. Choosing the right database within the context of people, process, and next generation technology is foundational to accelerating application modernization. 
On behalf of my co-presenter, Brad Barnes, and everyone at Redis, thank you for your time. I hope you enjoy the rest of the event, and please feel free to reach out to us on LinkedIn for any follow-up questions. Also, check out some of the supporting resources I listed here. Cheers.